All right, so here I am sitting with Eunice, and Eunice, it's probably been close to, what would you say, a year or longer than a year since I've seen you. So it's really good to see you again. Thanks for coming down here, and uh, I wanted you to be on the show um, for you to be able to share as a former international student who graduated from Berkeley City College, um, now uh, going to graduate school at the Academy of Art University in San Francisco, just amazing um, to see you progress, um, participate in a program here, which is called Optional Practical Training, uh, where you were able to get some employment experience for um, towards your degree. And so I'm really fascinated and interested to hear more about that and, and how, how that experience was for you. But first, how, how are you doing? And, and uh, it's good to see you again. Thank you, Drew. It's nice to see you as well and nice to be on the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so what was your major here at Berkeley City College? So I was doing a two-year animation certificate um, for animation one and animation two. So I I think I finished the two certificates. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I did. Yeah. <laughs> you had to have. Otherwise, you <laughs> And now, did you do that? I know that we're in the heart of Silicon Valley, but right around the corner here is Pixar. Did that have any motivation for you? Or do you have any desire to work at Pixar one day? Um, that was a slight motivation, but it was. I kind of moved here mainly for the feel. Like, I really like Berkeley um, as a city. Um, and also, my parents lived, they used to live in Mountain View. So. Oh, so that's close. And and you're from Canada, so we'll get a chance to talk about that as well. You said Calgary. Uh, we were joking before the show. I thought everybody in, in, in uh, Canada played hockey, but that's not true. So for those of you out there who think that everybody plays hockey in Canada, that is not true. But can you tell me what it was like growing up in, in, in Calgary? Yeah, so Calgary is the home of the Calgary Stampede. <laughs> what is? I've never heard of the Calgary oh, Stampede. No. Uh, the Calgary Stampede is um, every summer there's a week carnival, so all these rides get set up, and there's a rodeo, and there's like a grandstand show, and there's fireworks, um, and there's free pancake breakfast that different community centers or churches or companies host every morning for the Stampede. Um, so it's just like a, a really fun event that I grew up going to as a kid, um, so I went on a lot of rides, definitely got sick, <laughs> had my fair share of puking. <laughs> and you're eating junk food all day, you know, like corn dogs and fried, well, we had deep fried Oreos. One year there was deep fried scorpion on pizza. So then people started getting all creative with their deep fried foods. So then every year in Stampede, there's like a different food. Um, but even better, I'd say, <laughs> Um, is that we have the Canadian Rocky Mountains close by. So there's Banff National Park and Yoho National Park, Jasper as well. Um, so yeah, I grew up in the mountains, going in the mountains, hiking, climbing outdoors, um, snowboarding oh, yeah. in the winter. Yeah. But Canada is cold. So, <laughs> but the summers are beautiful. The summers you can wear shorts all day and night, um, yeah, there's like really nice, beautiful, warm weather. So oh. I did have nice summers. <laughs> oh, that's great. It reminds me at the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk, I believe that there's a place where you can go and they will deep fry anything. So they'll do deep fried Twinkies, uh, deep fried, I, I don't know what else you would deep fry. I mean, have you ever had a deep fried turkey? Is that the same as what they have at? Disneyland, that giant turkey leg? Uh, that's not deep fried. That, that's a turkey leg. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they deep fry that, but a lot of my friends have done deep fried turkeys for Thanksgiving. And if you're listening right now, you, you probably know exactly what I'm saying. And you're probably screaming at your radio right now going, you have to try a deep fried turkey. I just heard some horror experiences of people deep frying turkeys and burning down their hopefully not their whole house, but, you know, <laughs> but some <laughs> dangerous experiences. But, um, so I got to try deep fried Turkey, but that stampede sounds pretty cool. So if you go to Calgary, you have to go to the, it's called the Calgary stampede. Is it a, a specific time of year that they do that? Yeah, it's in the summer. So I think it's at the end of July. Um, but go at your own risk. <laughs> 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 not, oh. not everyone loves the stampede. It's, you know, there's a lot of people 
don't know, rides. It's a carnival, so right, right. yeah. Uh, that sounds fun. So, uh, so you came here to Berkeley, you studied animation, and then uh, once you finished your program, you participated in in OPT, as I mentioned. Uh, where where did you get to work, and and how was how was that experience for you? Yeah, so I got to work at um, a small nonprofit in Oakland called AI for All. Um, so what they do is they want to diversify the AI field because right now it's predominantly um, male um, and in that white and Asian male predominantly. And so, um, yeah, they're trying to mobilize the next generations of high schoolers and create some diversity in the field. So um, they're running programs all across America and Canada and hopefully internationally one day um, to get into AI and machine learning. And, and did you see the connection between what you learned in school to what you were doing at your job? Was there a connection to that? And, and how was it sort of an extension of what you learned here at Berkeley? Yeah, so I was a communications intern and I also did graphic design for them. Um, so it's a, it's a slight switch from animation in that I wasn't using animation programs, but in my animation degree, I got to use the Adobe Suite in general um, and use it in a creative way. So that was really, really great to be able to use those programs again and then see what I was making go out live, you know, like I made a graphic and it went out on Twitter or it p got posted on Facebook. Um, and then on the more communication side, I got to do interviews for their blog. So I interviewed um, what they call the role models in the field. And that was really interesting. Um, yeah, to be able to pick people's brains and highlight people's lives and what they've done in the field. So, yeah, it was great. Very cool. And now that you're at Academy of Art in San Francisco, um, what, what's your graduate program and what are you um, thinking about doing after, after your program is done there? Yeah, so I'm doing graphic design, a master's in graphic design. Um, and I guess what I'd like to say about how Peralta helps me um, kind of finalize my grad school or what I wanted to pursue in grad school. Um, I think it's it's valuable to go to community college and just kind of take classes and see what you're interested in. And I really thought that I was going to go for animation. I was like, I'm going to do this. This is my thing. And going in, I learned so many cool skills and I had a lot of fun, but I was like, animation is really not for me. But then out of that, I realized that, hey, I actually really like graphic design. And um, I, I got to take some of the classes in that. And while I was on my internship, I got to work as a graphic designer. So that solidified it more. And so going to grad school now, it's like, oh, I, I know what skills I want to learn. Um, I think I'm more focused on like, oh, these are the things that I need to get better at as a graphic designer. So it's a it was a good process I think yeah yeah well and that and that's the amazing thing about community colleges for me as well I, I went to Solano Community College and I had no idea what I wanted to study but because I got to take so many different classes and I remember I was like oh criminal justice that sounds really interesting and I took a criminal justice class I was like nope not for me uh, but then I took a psychology class and I was like oh this is really interesting and so I got a chance to sort of you know explore what I wanted to do and then transferred to Cal State East Bay and ended up sticking with psychology, mainly because I didn't have to take math. That was my whole, <laughs> I was like, oh, I don't have to take math? Oh, perfect. Uh, that'll be my major. Um, as you were talking too, I, I, I finally heard a little bit of that Canadian accent with, you know what word it was that you said that uh, sticks out when anyone from Canada says it? It's probably out and about <laughs> and Sorry. So <laughs> it was about, <laughs> but yes, <laughs> out and about and, and sorry. sorry. Oh, yeah. I think Americans say sorry, like they say it with an A more like sorry <laughs> and Canadians say sorry. Like it's a very O sound. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. So um, is there anything else you'd like to share? Thank you again for coming down here today. Um, really appreciate you spending some time and um, congratulations on finishing your program here. Wish you all the best in being an awesome graphic designer in the future. And uh, is there any parting words that you have for those that are listening? Hmm, parting words. I guess um, 
I would stress that OPT is like a super important part of um, international students' experience in the U.S. because you actually get to get full-fledged experience in the U.S. industry. Um, and yeah, it's like you study in the U.S. and then you want to get a little bit of experience here before you go on to next things. So mm-hmm. yeah, I think the OPT program was really helpful in that it gave me the opportunity to go work somewhere and yeah. I appreciate you saying that, especially because I oversee the OPT program here. <laughs> and I, I think I mentioned to you that there's a court case going on right now um, with a, a union against the Department of Homeland Security to try to shut down the OPT program for international students. And so Eunice was kind enough to share her story, and uh, it may even go into an amicus brief uh, that will be submitted to court and uh, be a part of a a court case that will help keep OPT alive um, here in the United States because it is a valuable uh, program for students. So I want to say thank you again for uh, your support. And maybe we'll even submit this podcast as a part of that as well. Maybe we'll let them know, hey, we have this uh, radio show and we had a student on that shared about OPT. So thank you again for doing that. And uh, with that, I would uh, like to say thank you again to Eunice, my guest, and hopefully uh, all of you guys are having a great day out there.